And hello YouTube. Hmm. Welcome back. So let's go uh, talk about how to get a proper sine wave out of this that is continuously uh, uh, changing with time. Because you know the 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 sim x sine wave simulation sine wave will be something like this. We want something like this where we can toggle the amplitudes up and down, toggle the frequency, toggle the phase and it's all in real time okay at least at least at the very least we want to do that okay so uh of course the structure is somewhat different and there's even a transfer function there for you so okay what, what are we supposed to do uh to to get it to run properly so i'm going to stop this okay and if you run this thing it will just give you this jagged zigzags sine like wave but it's not really a sine wave at all it's like a sawtooth wave which is not correct so what's going on here? Okay, and uh, that's the first of the uh, several problems. The other thing is that it's it's like stopping at 10 seconds, which you don't want. And the moment I press run, this thing does not even continue at all to give you that real time signal. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, let's let's solve the, the problems one at a time. Okay, let's solve the problems one at a time. Okay, about Okay, about one and a half minutes. All right, let's try to do it in 18 minutes. I'll try to keep my videos within 20 minutes. Okay, as far as possible, right? Can't promise all the time. Anyway, so let's see what we can do. Solve it one at a time. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's try to make this thing a continuous thing with time. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, uh, so we want it to keep running, right? Okay, so you want to keep running, so uh, go to your control and simulation route, top left hand side. There will be this thing called configure simulation parameters. The simulation time, uh, that's the first thing you will see. Initial time, 0 seconds, final time, 10 seconds. So if you take a look at this, um, 0 to 10, and we see here, 0 to 10, that kind of makes sense. So we are only given 10 seconds of simulation time. So let's try 1000 instead, okay? Let's try 1000 instead and see how things go. If we try 1000, okay, we will get, uh, we'll get it all the way up to about 900 plus seconds of uh, simulated time. But okay, this is this is okay. At least we get past the 10 second limit. But what about the getting it in real time? Because it is going way too fast for real time. So how do we synchronize it to the real time? Okay, go to simulation parameters again top left hand side and go under timing parameters okay the thing you must uh, enable is called synchronize loop to timing source again under timing parameters tab enable synchronize timing synchronize loop to timing source okay the timing source uh, will be by default a one kilohertz uh, clock or something like that and that's about all you can take and let's click ok so we'll change it one at a time and see what happens. Okay, so let's go back to our front panel and we press play. All right, so we see this uh, going up and down and it will stop at 1000 seconds. So that's way too long, of course, for this video. And you'll go 11, 12, 13, so on and so forth. Why is it doing this jagged thing? Can we not have a smooth sine wave? Okay, so we can have a smooth sine wave. So we'll need to, okay, yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll need to do make some changes, okay? First thing we'll want to do is go under timing parameters and play with the period. So instead of a period of 1000 milliseconds, which is one second, let's do a 50 millisecond period. So again, top left, under timing parameters, go to loop timing attributes, your period, we, we change it from 1000 seconds to 50. So instead, that, that's like your wait timing in your while loop, uh, which you have, uh, yeah, instead of 1000 milliseconds, which is one second in, in total, you get 50 milliseconds. So every 50 milliseconds, you sample a sine wave. So you see, now now you're like, you're like doing something of that sort. Okay, uh, that's uh, somewhat useful. Okay, so, uh, Every 50 milliseconds, it, it does this uh, 
does this up and down thing. But it's still jagged. Okay, so what's what's actually wrong with this thing? Okay, what's actually wrong? Um, okay, so we, we did a synchronized uh, set and everything already. Um, okay, looks like this period doesn't actually do very much. Okay, so we have a 1000 second period because you can uh, change it to an automatic period okay uh, so what, what else can we do? okay so uh, one thing you'll notice that this uh, time step and tolerance uh, these are things you can actually uh, you can actually uh, what do you call that? evaluate here so there's this thing called maximum time step size and the maximum time step is one second okay so, and we notice that, uh, of course, this zigzag thing is a, well, happens at one second intervals, right? So maybe the time step is too big. Let's reduce the time step, okay? Maybe uh, reduce from one second to 0 0.01. And let's try. See whether it turns smooth. Okay, so now, now you see this, uh, see this thing is actually going forward very nicely. So there's a sine wave occurring and it's steadily growing but it's it's really really slow now and it's still not a real time thing. So let's let's do something uh, else. Okay. Okay. Um on that. Okay. Uh let let's try a few things. Okay, so again, we'll reduce our period to maybe 50 milliseconds. And we, s we check the time step, 0 0.01 seconds, okay? So let's see whether this changes. So again, we're still like running in slow-mo right here. You can see the sine wave is slowly, slowly sort of developing and everything. Okay, so we have a we have a sine wave, but it's not like running in real time. It's so, sort of running, not in the real time. Okay, so to, okay, at least at least we got rid of the the jagged image part. Okay, and there's an easier way to do it. Uh, if you look at the solver method, instead of going the run cu runger cutter two three variable, you can just do a runger cutter one, which is a Euler method. This should be able to run very quickly. And let's see what, what happens in the front panel. Ah, look look at this. It's uh 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is this is somewhat at uh the correct uh, uh no, not not correct, but it's more bearable. You can see that it's running uh at least a little bit closer to real time. So yeah. Okay, so if you want to do this uh uh, Runger cutter one Euler, so just do that, and uh, of course this is good practice as well. You have a not a number or infinity check. Then maybe uh, if some of those values go way out, you will you maybe you'll stop the thing or what. I'm not quite sure what this does exactly. Can't remember, but it's one of the settings that's being uh, uh, is being done in here. So if you're not sure. Uh, what settings you can, uh, how you're supposed to set up your simulation. You can go to the SimX sign example, double click on this, and you can take a look at what, how they, how they uh, set up their things here. You have this not a number infinity check. It specifies the ODVE solver to stop if it encounters not a number or infinity or divide by zero. Okay, and the final time doesn't have to be ten, uh, 1000 seconds, you can just put infinity there. So let's put infinity over there in this one, I and F, and let's uh, click this not a number thing. Okay, so I'll click OK. All right, and let's uh, let's play again. Okay, so it goes up 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, etc, etc. So it looks pretty good, but again, uh, it's not exactly going at the real time. And it, it will go all the way up to infinity, so no problem there. So, uh, how how do you how do you uh, do this properly? Okay, under loop timing attributes, ideally you should have this auto period thing turned on. So you should have this auto period checkbox. 
Okay, just now it was grayed out, I think because we used the uh, Runga Kata 2.3. Now it's turned on, okay? Just now we were using Runga Kata 2.3 variable over here. Under timing parameters, uh, the auto period box was grayed out, so you can't do anything. So you need to change it to Runga Kata 1, and you click this auto period. Okay, and then it will sync it correctly for you. So now if you change to the front panel, okay, change to the front panel, you should be able to get it at the correct period. Okay, so this 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 will be the, the right period, the right time step to enable it to go real time. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so that's about one second. So this is how you get it running in real time. Of course, you can use different Runga Kata methods as well, for example, RK4, and then you will still have your auto period turned on. It will more or less give you the same the same uh, effect. See? It will still give you the same effect. You are able to put this sine wave uh, on. So I'm going to stop this thing. Okay? Next thing... Um, yeah. Next thing, okay? Uh, let, let's see how much time. I keep forgetting. Okay. Well, since since we've more or less uh, gotten our our uh, sine wave set up, okay, let's let's start putting it through its paces, okay, uh, through a transfer function. And if you ever forget how to do it properly, we can always take a look at this transfer function. Okay, the transfer function will take in some double value, and it will translate to some other double value. Okay. Again, uh, it will take in uh, some double value, for example, amplitude, and it will give, uh, it will, uh, how do you say? Yeah, it will give out some other uh, a time varying signal, okay? So let, let's try the transfer function thing. Okay, so we are going to take that sign signal, we're going to put it through a transfer function, and then we're going to get that waveform, another waveform. So let's see. Uh, go to control and simulation. Go on a simulation. Under uh, continuous linear systems. Okay, continuous linear systems. There'll be something called transfer function. Okay, so again, right click. Go to uh, control and simulation. Uh, simulation. You'll have this thing called continuous linear systems. Go to the one saying transfer function. And put it here. Okay. So this transfer function is a 1 over s plus 1. So it's a first order with some... Yeah, it's just a first order system. There's no delay here. You can actually uh, uh, help... You, know, you can actually uh, modify the transfer function in the bottom, your numerator and denominator, according to poles and zeros. Okay? You can make it a single output... Uh, single input, single output tile transfer function, or multiple input, multiple output transfer function, CISO and MIMO uh, respectively. Okay, so let's see whether this thing is stable first. I have no idea. I do not want a very bad pole. Okay. Uh, so this is not the, not the one. I want to check the simulation. Uh, sorry, wrong one. CD sim. So let, let's, let's check whether this transfer function is stable. Okay, let me close this first. Okay, uh, I think I opened up too many again. Let me stop this. Yeah, this is the one. Ooh, not responding. Great. <laughs> okay. So... Okay, anyway, this is the, the CD sim uh, YouTube demo I did for the last videos. Let's try looking for our transfer functions and we'll go to the custom transfer function. Okay, so we'll just, uh, we'll just have this. Okay, one in the numerator, one, one, and two in the denominator. All right, so this this looks like a stable transfer function. You can see the step plot step uh 
the step uh, step response being uh pretty stable. It's a it's a under dam system, but it's still stable. And if we look at the engineering uh thing, we see that uh, all poles are on the left hand side. So this this is a stable transfer function. So let's let's uh do that. Use this uh, transfer function. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put one one and two here. Okay, so this will be a transfer function. I can of course make it bigger. And so let's see what terminals it has. It has a UT. So this is a time signal, time varying signal. So you can just uh, plot this in here. And next thing we have a, uh, it will have an output and a state. So we're just, uh, we're just, we're only interested in input and output at this point in time. So let's go to array so that we can start to uh, get all of this into a waveform chart. Go to build array, put this here, and we'll put the output over here. Okay, and what next is that we'll need to we'll need to display this on a chart. So that's that's the easy. Go to control and simulation, go to simulation, and you will go to this part saying graph utilities, sim time waveform. Let's put a sim time waveform here. So we'll put this here. And then we'll name this waveform chart uh, output. Uh, yes, output. And this waveform chart here will be input. All right. So let's do it. Okay. So this this has been saved. We have an input chart and an output chart. Okay. So let's go and let's start. Okay. So. What do you have here? Okay, it's it looks like uh, it looks like uh, after a while, yeah, you have some initial disturbance, but uh, after a while, you you see this uh, bottom sine wave actually uh, leveling out. So, uh, as as you know, in frequency response, if you actually uh, put in, you put in some disturbance, you put in some disturbance, uh. All right, you put in a disturbance, uh, a, sin a sinusoidal disturbance into a linear system, there will be some gain and some phase shift. Okay, so you see the, the gain here at this frequency, it's a, uh, well, you can see the amplitude here is 0 0.05 because, uh, yeah, your system is uh, oscillating so quickly. And if you take a look at the body plots, okay, what's the frequency we have here? I think it's about... Uh, one okay one per second one or half i can't quite make out what it is here it's a little hard for my eyes to see i don't squint my eyes but it will be in the order of magnitude of about one hertz so you can see the one hertz thing we actually have a drop in magnitude right so we have a drop in magnitude uh okay, we have a drop in magnitude so uh According to our body phase plots, uh, this this transfer function will cause some uh, drop in magnitude. Okay, so we do see a drop in uh, drop in this uh, amplitude of the output sine wave. Okay, and that's uh, quite easy to see here, f at least from this uh, looking at the scale. Okay, otherwise, if you don't look at the scale, it's very hard to compare. Okay, or it's impossible. Okay, so. Yeah, so these are how you, oops, uh, yeah, these are how you get inputs and outputs. Yeah, so let me stop this, and uh, I guess we can just uh, call it a day. Yeah, um, so thanks for watching. So this is how you basically get this uh, input and output loops, and um, yeah, you, you can actually put these loops through a transfer function, for example, a sign signal will go through some transfer function and it will come out as an output, which you can, of course, chart and graph as well. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have for you. Uh, I shall see you again. Bye-bye.